last year. I put it in the no hell no. It would not make it to the United States. Alrighty guys, so is it sunset or is it sunrise? We got the window behind us. You guys let us know. It's a 5 a.m. somewhere, right? Mm -hmm. 5 p.m. somewhere. Happy hour. Cheers. Cheers. On this show, it's going to be a little different. It's going to be a lot more laid back. We're going to talk about entrepreneurship and just childhood uh, memories, friendship. We're going to talk about a variety of different things. We're going to get into the city of Inglewood, which is our beloved city that we're from. And yeah, Steph, uh, Steph, you know, she encouraged that we have some some alcohol, some alcohol in the show. So if it's not the Rick Productions, you guys know, then, you know, it's. It's more of a personal show, yeah, this time around. Hi, um, obviously, Siete by Siete. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I'm Stephanie. I don't really want to be introduced or labeled as anything for this podcast because I think I'm, I'm coming as a friend more than an entrepreneur or a business partner or anything or somebody that works with you. Fair but um, I think you deserve a friend on the podcast. So that's who's going to be here today. <laughs> thank you thank you for joining me today it's been a long like time coming because the first podcast that we did interesting we did a whole like two hour podcast only so i could find out that one of my microphones were off my microphone was off yeah and i was so i was so upset that i hid in my little layer mm -hmm. and i was just like you know what i gotta make this right boom like thousands of dollars of investments later and here we are in a podcast studio with professional audio <laughs> but i just want to say that what a little idea you know can end up being right like we literally had some different mics just maybe two cameras right yeah just two cameras one light at the shop one and light. you know we did the best we can somehow we still blew up talking about inglewood right yeah, we gained some momentum talking yeah. about the city of Inglewood, like the education it gave us. And yeah, and I think that that kind of sparked um, a little fire in us to keep going. And I think for you, it's I'm really proud to be a part of your life and especially, you know, both professional and personal, because, you know, having a business, it's not easy. You invest a lot of money. I know that I take everything in my business very serious from my bed that I work on or the chair I sit on and absolutely everything that I touch and the product that I use, I have a lot of pride in it because I worked for it. It was not a handout. It was not my dad's money, my mom's money, the government's money. I don't have a man providing all of this for me. So I give you so much props because I always think that when you look around and your cameras, these mics, just like you said, it's thousands of dollars that you're just dropping and investing. And a lot of people are scared to invest, you know, or they're investing these big bucks to then end up not doing anything with it. Right. And I think that it's beautiful to see what you created, like this entire studio. It's off like it's just your hard work and it's proof that you're serious about your brand and you're serious, you take yourself serious, and that's really important. Thank you about that. Um, a lot of people are asking me what's my motive in this, and honestly, like, it's crazy. I had a Netflix producer in here not so long ago, and, like, I had my boy just today, you know, Scout Fragrance, such a great guy that I work with. He's, Shout out to Eric, because yeah. I got a free... <laughs> I got a gift from Eric. I'm going to smell so bomb. <laughs> you see, we, we, I don't know how to feel about it, though, because it, be it means no, it means so much to me because when I'm not used to getting gift things yeah. or giving things. And when um, I am gifted something, it mm -hmm. means a lot to me. So anything that's given to me, it's like. You know, people are like, oh, you're so exaggerating. But I was like, no. And, you know, in Eric's podcast, he talks about how we collect perfumes and we collect it and we don't use it and it's just sitting there. But I feel like this one of these might just chill because I'm going to want to remember who gave it to me, how I got it. I got it at a, you know, just sitting in on a, on a podcast. See, exactly. Like, imagine that, like, like I got invited to a premiere and um, mm -hmm. we got what a giveaway on the podcast and it just good things are happening 
because of the podcast. And I yeah. think like a lot of people are asking like, what's your method and idea behind this? And I think it's literally like, I'm just a human that's living life and I want good vibes around me. Uh, I don't want, I don't bring just anybody onto this show, my personal show. Like you, you feel free to rent a studio if you want to create, which is another thing. I feel like a lot of people could spend their time creating something. I think it's very respectable. I actually yeah. respect like content creators and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. I respect people who go out there out of like their normal workspace and, and, and do something that they believe in. I respect that yeah. because uh, we need more of that, you know, more energy. So. But congratulations on getting your first giveaway. That's <laughs> a big deal. Sponsored giveaway, huh? That, yes. And then check this out. Apparently, I'm wearing a hoodie from the Wood Class. It's you. So you, you know can what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's just like. No. So I think um, my purpose behind getting an Inglewood, like getting a hoodie from the Wood Class, was because the first episode that we did, and you know, we only posted a reel from two hours of filming yeah and but that reel was gold in a lot of different ways why because you know it, we talk we talk about our city and right now it's trending to be from inglewood right right now yeah. everybody wants to be a party and wants to get a piece of our city and i think that um i was thinking really hard and i said you know for my birthday i did a photo shoot and i'm not I'm very casual. I'm very laid back. I like to wear t-shirts and hoodies. Yeah. And I originally wanted to get some gear from the wood class for my birthday shoot. But then I eventually just ended up going recently. And um, something I learned was that they've been in business since 2011. Um, They don't have an online store. So you have to go to the shop. They've had different locations. So it just kind of shows you how... Not every business has to stay in one location because it's not easy, especially not in our city. Like, you know, I'm going to obviously talk in a business perspective because I have a shop. I've had a shop before I had my own shop and then I moved. And man, having a business location in the city of Inglewood is not easy. They require a lot of permits, a lot of licenses. It's not easy. So I give these guys so much props for being in the city, for repping, for being in business so many years. And I think it's cool that if you, it's so genuine where like, if you really wanted to wear something from the wood class, you have to pull up to the store and you have to experience what they're about. So when you walk in, just like when I walk into the studio, all I see is Rick production. When I walk into the wood class, it's I see them and their brand and their family. And I think that's very important because it speaks very highly of our city. Yeah, the fact that they're still operating in the city of Inglewood is, uh, like, kind of amazing to me because, like you said, it's not it's not cheap. It's not cheap. And you're telling me right? you're a clothing it's store? Yeah, yeah you're, you're a clothing you're a clothing store? Like, these hoodies go about, like, how much, like, you think? Well, right now, they're on sale. So, if, oh, you, okay. are, if you watch this on time, take advantage We're of, gonna... of the sale. But I think they run, like, 40, 60 bucks, depending yeah. if... We, you haven't registered your business and and you don't have to don't do it just don't do it yet milk it as much as you can i almost did it i almost registered my business in don't the city do it Rick. only like, because they have so many no, grants yeah. right now i feel well, you good. could apply for the grants yes and because you're investing so much i agree yeah, with same. why you should but again like if you're investing a lot of money into a business and you're you can't tax like you can't write off a bunch of stuff that like half of your investments and yeah that's crazy to me but if you could get paid cash, if you could be under the radar for a few years, just do it. <laughs> Real, know, respectfully, just do I it. I know this sounds crazy, but um, I'm not done investing. Can no. you believe that? <laughs> when I had my previous shop, I wasn't in Inglewood. I was in L.A. It you was in LA, yeah. South Central, but I was literally on the borderline of Inglewood and L.A. So I was really like a, four minutes from my house. But it was L.A. and it wasn't that difficult for me to get permits, to get licenses and to just get my shop up and running. Where in Inglewood, oh, my God, it's like they want to milk you for everything. So it kind of sucks because for the community, it's like we can't afford to open businesses for ourselves. But then all of these people are coming in and they're just getting permits and they're just opening business left left and right. You know, so it kind of sucks. We're like are we lacking the community support especially in small businesses or 
what where where are we going wrong when it comes to like the city you know i think i think it's one of those like uh I think it's very political. I think it's yeah. one of those like one percenters, the top 10 percenters gather in a table yeah, and they'd be like, all right, so we got all these funds and, and you know, it's a big table, right? Mm-hmm. Of 12 people, right? Mm-hmm. Kind of like Jesus, right? <laughs> Government and religion is funny. <laughs> um, they gather in this fucking table and they're like, well, we got $10 billion. Yeah. You're going to get this. You're going to get that. Let's break some bread. Right. And then here comes the the city folks. They're walking in and shit. They're like, oh shit, shit! Like you know, like oh shit. And then you know, us city folks, like, hey, what's going on in here? You know, and it's just like, what the fuck is going? Oh, you know, and then oh, nothing. You know, nothing. We were just discussing, yeah. you know, the funding for the bit for the city. You know, like uh, yeah. Oh, I heard we just got like billions of grants for the city of Inglewood. Oh yeah, you know, well, yeah, we do. But they're who's, not for you. Yeah, yeah who said it was <laughs> but for you? you don't though. Qualify. Yeah, we're gonna build the roads. What does the city of Inglewood do for their schools right now? I would like to be. Maybe I'll have a city but of Inglewood I official feel, come here. I don't yes, know. Like, but I also feel like this is where it gets political for us. See, I can't. Because, I, see, we can't. Like, I hate, can't po- I hate politics, bro. Uh, like, me I hate too. It. So but I would like, love to walk into their, to the fucking room I and be think, like, what's up, guys? I like, think you know? that our job, at least my <laughs> job, that I like to, I think for me as a citizen in of Inglewood, a resident, I think that it's our job, especially in the small business community, to all support each other. So, for example, I went to the new movie theater, right? The yeah. Sinapolis. Okay. I'm all for it. I think it's really cool. We finally have our own movie theater. It's because nice. we have to always leave the city to go do stuff. How are the chairs? Huh? How are the chairs? Dude, it's so bougie. You would not think you're in Inglewood. And I am yeah. so here for it. Yeah, like we deserve nice things. Okay. And, you know, I, I just love being in our area because Inglewood is big on community. We're not racist. And, you know, we do have those people that can be. But I really like um, that we're a mix. Like we're black. It's a black and Hispanic community with a few outsiders. And, you know, we're building a new community yeah, again you, you don't you don't really like hear about racism in inglewood no, it's but what like you do hear about is like the culture is really mm-hmm. strong yeah so if you're from a different culture yeah it's like it's a different story yeah but it doesn't for example um okay i went to the movie theater right and here are these bodybuilding guys like they're opening a gym at the movie like, like right next door in that plaza i guess they're making okay. a plaza and they're building making the this theater gym. smell like ass huh no okay, so okay, it's no. a really bougie theater <laughs> like you can order food there the seats are recliners uh-huh. like it's super bougie i honestly can't talk bad about it like no. it's legit i heard about the theater but it's just like uh i don't know it's just i'm still skeptical i'm like i don't know it's the city of inglewood like no I you think know everything's that, being gentrified so i feel like someone's yeah, gonna but like it keeps act people up in our city and it keeps people coming so yeah. it gets people to stop by the wood like somebody that moved out of inglewood right to like another city and they're going to come to a Raiders game or to any random game. They're going to say. I already, went to, a Ra- I already yeah. went to a Raiders game. <laughs> they're going to say like, oh, I'm going to go pull up to the wood class real quick, you know, and then mm-hmm. it gives the wood class clients or going back to the gym. You know, there's a small there's a there's a lot of small gyms in Inglewood. Like there's those ladies with Zumba, um, Alpha Uno on Alvarvita. And then there's like another boxing fitness gym on Alvarvita, too. Mm-hmm. So, you know. When I went into the theater that day and I saw these guys with the gym, like the whole gym was there, like the owners. And then I was like, oh, what are you guys doing here? You know, I asked and they said, oh, we're going to open this big gym right here. Like, it's going to be great. We have one from Long Beach and blah, blah, blah. It sounds great. It's I'm pretty sure it's going to be a really nice gym, but it kind of sucks because it kind of does take away from our small gyms that we do have in the area, the ones we know about, mm-hmm. right? Like, mm-hmm. I don't really care about LA Fitness or these franchises, but, like, all these little businesses in the area could suffer because now they made this big bougie gym inside this bougie plaza. Like, that's instead, down of, the instead of just funding these family-owned yeah. Yeah. gyms to, like... Well, my thing is, if it were in a community, in like, if we're a community... We, we should, should be, support we should each be other that. so that our community members don't struggle with all of these major businesses that are moving in. So I think it's really important that we talk about these things because 
we're supposed to support each other it's, a, it's important but it's also very political yeah it is because yeah. it's like you would say like oh does everybody in your family support your business or your friends support your business shit no exactly <laughs> I got I got friends and and people that hardly know me that support my business. You exactly, know? and I feel the same my, way. My good friend here that was here, you know, like he's here in the audience, and like even him, you know, it's just like it's like they say you're gonna get your biggest support from the people that like yeah that don't know you. And that's that's where I'm kind of going with this. It's like um, sometimes our businesses fail. Thank you. Sometimes our businesses fail because of the lack of um, support and. If our if all of these people if there's so many changes in the city, how are we not gonna support each other and like who's gonna speak up about hey like like don't hate on so and so because they're doing the same thing as you? It's how about we support each other so that we stay in our city and we don't get kicked out? You know, us Americans mm -hmm. we're so like egocentric. Um, there's other countries in the world like Asian countries that they're like they're more like a group, they stick together. Yeah. And Americans are so like ego driven. Is it Americans though? Because I feel like it's a, the, it's a thing. Like, yeah. But I feel like yeah. the black community, I always say like I respect the black community mm -hmm. because of the whole Black Lives Matter movement. Okay. Like you see and that plastered everywhere. No, you see it plastered everywhere. Yeah. Like it's something we all know. It's Black Lives Matter. Right. Yeah. But like um, I what I like and what I think is beautiful is that they're so strong in their community that they know how to uplift each other like when it comes to men and women and i think that in the hispanic community in our like yes there's movements for like brown pride and all of this latino movement but we don't really support each other or we don't really put like like for example jamaicans right there's not a lot of jamaicans in la random topic random culture i don't know anything about jamaicans but the few jamaicans that i do know like they support each other hard and the restaurant's like, oh, there's a Jamaican restaurant right there. I'm going to go try it. You know, they're, they're yeah. like that. And like us, we're like, oh, that, that restaurant says it's from Baja. Like, is it really yeah, Baja? Yeah, we're like, we're like, like very easy to judge, really, quick yeah, to judge. Like we judge each other. Pull each other down when exactly. we're climbing up. And so then that's where you go. Like, is it a cultural thing? If we can just focus on our city and help each other out. For example, the shop where I work at, right? Madera Beauty. Mm -hmm. Um, I think our purpose for our shop is to be able to have a business, a beauty shop in Inglewood. It's the only licensed permanent makeup shop in Inglewood. Like there's no permanent makeup studio registered legally in the city of Inglewood. So they're, they're like doing it right and they so deserve, yeah, they deserve the support. Bernadette's doing it right. She's the owner of Madera Beauty Group. And she's so, such a dope she's person. She's such a dope like, person. And I feel like, for example, speaking about the business, right? Like, it's a shop. I'm so proud to work there because how many shops can you go to where both black women and Latina women can coexist together? You get me? Like, you don't really see that because of, Latino really. barbers stick to, like, get Latino uh, clients. Like a barber shop. Black barbers have their black clients. And yeah. I think it's, it's true. Like, a black girl is not going to go to a Latina girl to get her hair braided. You know, uh -huh. so it's like and that happens in this shop. Right and it happened. No. So with us, it's like I do. I do everybody's lashes. I like to be able to be a part of a shop that represents me and my morals. And it's like everybody's welcome here. Like mm -hmm. we're and it represents our city and it gets a little deeper than that. So it's like showcasing these businesses. It's like the wood class doesn't just sell to Latinos. Like, they sold to everybody that's from Inglewood. Yeah. So, it's going back to, like, the community supporting each other and uplifting our businesses all at once. You know, it's funny. Like, I know kind of, like, off topic, but just this weekend, I did a wedding. And and my crew, and it, it, it's even, to me, to me personally, it's weird to even say this shit because I don't think about it like that. But, you know... We got a black guy in our crew, right? <laughs> and it, like I said, it's weird to me because I don't see like color like that. Yeah, you um, don't see him different because I he's don't. Black. But but like but like I fucking love him. Yeah. And, and just re and like it's funny because we're at a Hispanic yeah. wedding and then like there's one black guy there and, and then, he's having a blast. And dude, at the end of the wedding, the dude he was hammering and the black guy was just like, "Hey man, like, like like th <laughs> thanks for having you know thanks for having some like some mixture in your crew. I think that's fucking awesome." And I'm like, dude. 
honestly like yeah like you never even noticed that there was a it was it's fucking like awesome that. but i feel like they do stick together because like uh for instance we did a we did a black and a hispanic quinceanera mm-hmm. uh a quinceanera that was both oh, black, that's like cool. half and half they're mixed and yeah and to be very honest with the whole business aspect of it like you know the djs like the d all the vendors are like i think the the dj was uh you know black uh the person that was doing the drinks was hispanic and yeah, to be honest with you cultures, like yeah. yeah they support each other because uh they the dj went up to my buddy alfred instead of going up to me and they were like hey could we get your business card mm-hmm. and my boy looked at me and i'm just like yeah like do it bro because like as yeah, long as he's, as long as you're in, you. yeah if you're earning yeah. his business we're making me business like we're all family here mm-hmm. do it bro and obviously there's a reason <laughs> it's funny because i was just like there's a reason why they approach you over me let's yeah. be honest and yeah. then my boy editor he was just like ooh, like trying to instigate and i'm like no no, no shut the fuck up you know exactly he was like ooh, he was like it's okay alfred he doesn't know what he's talking but about I and like i was like no dude i know exactly raised, yeah yeah i was like i know yeah, exactly like, what the fuck there. i was yeah. like i know yeah he, he, he was trying to like he was trying to like uh like and i'm very straight up person yeah yeah, yeah. I'm a very straight up person. Very fair, but very straight mm-hmm. up. I'll tell you how it is. And he was trying to like bandage it, like, ooh, like, like instigate it, but bandage it. But I was just yeah, like, he was like, he doesn't like, know what like, he's talking about. Like, like, he, like, and I was just like, no, I know exactly what the fuck I'm talking about. Yeah. And I'm okay with that. You know, like, get, yeah. get, the, get the information, get the information, and we're going to do their event. Let's yeah. fucking do it, bro. Yeah. Because my, my, like, my guys that work with me, and I work, and I say work with me because every single one of them Dude, has. Dude, that's such a part. Let me just stop you right there. What you just said is so powerful, and a lot of people don't get that. You literally just said the people that work with me. Yeah. As the owner of a company, a lot of people forget leaders, leaders, mm-hmm. and I'm going to do that because sometimes they don't know how to lead. Yeah. And it's the words that are powerful and that keep people working with you and that keep people with you because you said the people that work with me, it's like I'm with them working. You know, yeah. compared to like other people are like oh, the people work, that work, work for me, me and shit they like work that. for me, they do this go, for me. I learned something at a very young age and I think it just stuck to me really hard. And it's the reason why I think the way I think. And it was in order to lead, you must know how to follow. And I feel like you've heard me say this before. And I think that's so powerful because a lot of people don't want to be the follower. A lot of people don't want to be behind the leader. Uh I'm a leader. I'm a boss. I'm like those words are like they make you ugly, you know, and it's just like, how are you going to lead if you don't know what he's what what his job is like? Sometimes you get there and you don't want that position anymore. You know, I I tell my people. So this is the way I tell my team. Right. Mm -hmm. And cheers to that. Cheers. Cheers to leadership. Right. Yeah, seriously. Cheers to doing big things. Cheers to doing whatever we want at whatever time we want when we want to. There you go. Cheers. Half of the time because I'm still working for the Cheers. government. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wish I was too. <laughs> yeah, I still work for the government. I'm so. a struggling business owner. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this past weekend, one of my team members, I, I told him, I was like, look, I don't have the budget to bring you along, man. I yeah. would love to have you along, but I don't have yeah, the budget. I'm trying to get it. there. I'm trying to get everybody fed. Yeah. And he literally was like, yo, you know what, bro? I haven't been out on the field. I love your guys' vibe. Like, Let me just go. I'm going to go with you. Just for Don't the worry about yeah, it. Just give me on the next one. Mm-hmm. And I said, dude, like, that's that's what the fuck I'm talking about. But that shows so much of him and how much he wants something. Because, yeah, no, you yeah, know, you got to put in the work to be able to get there. And sometimes you don't get handouts. Like, for example, like, we can have experience in a lot of things, right? Yeah. But that doesn't mean that we have to teach everybody how to get like us. But there's a lot of people that don't even want anything in return. It's like, let me just get the experience. And sometimes people don't want to do that. They just think like, no, that's not my worth. It's like people like, especially right now, it's trending to be an entrepreneur, right? Yeah. But there's I know you like, talked about this last time. That yeah, we talked about this. Shit. Like it's it's popping. People like, just slapping their shit around. Like, everybody is a business owner. Everybody is like, oh, you know. I do big things for my like shut up like shut the fu- <laughs> like I don't even curse but shut the fuck up Sorry. because I just don't like the cockiness where it's like man little do you know that the moment you register your business or you start doing real investments like you 
you're not gonna be feeling that proud of yourself because it's scary out here it's it's really scary out here you it's know? really it's, 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 it's really scary don't do it <laughs> stay with your corporate job and they, get insurance they don't, yeah they don't talk about <laughs> like the ugly that's that's why i stick yeah, with my nine to five no but that's what i told everybody my like, boys be like, be like what are you doing here man like, i give them my instagram they go to the break room and they come back like man what the f- what are you doing here man what are you doing it's it's the medical huh it's the insurance, huh? I'm just like, You're like, yeah, you should be like, that's right, bro. I was like, I'm here for I'm the like, dental bad- we, we got a badass job, bro. What do you mean? What am I doing here? I'm here just for the same reason you're here too. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, so I'm very interesting in that fact because yeah. a lot of entrepreneurs they tell me they're like, no, oh, like- and this is where it gets me. They're like, so you're not a true entrepreneur? I said, what? I don't even question that, but in my mind is just like, what? I'm like, oh, you- so you're not a true entrepreneur because you got your nine to five, like, bro? What? what not like i still all. make fucking big sacrifices you can't bash or, you can't bash small businesses you can't bash people that have a job full-time and a small business on the side you can't bash any of them i don't know and, and then you I, know like my other friend steph she said that there's the difference between like hustle versus like um there's a difference between being a hustler versus being there's another word for it and she said she didn't like the word hustle because hustle is just like you're trying to make a quick buck. You know what? You're doing that, something. You're something. You're, you're trying to make a quick buck. I and I, 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 he, oh, too. I just hustled that person. Like, yeah, and that so, sounds so like ugly. a hustle is different between a hustler. A hustler yeah. is like trying to, trying to like you know. So there's yeah, a negative like they're term. hustling. They're trying to put in the work. I get that a lot. Like, yeah. I think I get a lot of compliments. They're like, man, you're just such a boss, and that makes me cringe. Or they'll tell me like, man, it's because you're just a hustler. But I think. I'm not, I'm a hustler in the sense that nothing stops me from making sure I got food on my table or money to eat, right? Yeah. And I think that's where I get it. But I, um, my big sister always used to tell me like, hey, you know, you can't, you can't, like, I don't like when they say hustle, like, don't say hustle or don't put the stuff like that. I'm like, I don't. And then I asked her, I'm like, why though? Like, I was like, because I feel like I get that a lot. She's like, no, because I feel like you're right like kind of what your friend said when you hustle someone it's kind of sounds ugly like i just played you like i just took your money and like hustled you for an extra 20 bucks or something i didn't really work for so uh the audience just asked what makes you get into working i think it i think i i it was meant to be Mm -hmm. i think it was already in me okay since i was little Mm -hmm. um i was talking to my friend arch the other day um he's one of nipsey's graphic designers okay and um i was telling him he was telling me about his kids and one of his daughters is kind of like me in a way where like when i was in the third grade i remember my dad brought a bunch of toys back from mexico and um i was just selling them at school and somehow my dad taught me he's like all right you want to make money um look you could buy this box of chocolates at costco Mm -hmm. and you're gonna spend that money it's 15 bucks but there's 20 chocolates here you're gonna make five dollars extra what depending on how much you sell the chocolate for right Mm -hmm. and he just kind of told me like but you're good you're you're doing the investment like this is your money if you want to keep making money and i did it and um it got to the point where i was known for selling stuff in my class Mm -hmm. so i had a stack of money what'd you sell just chocolates and just candies cho- and toys. I tried selling a box of chocolates from Costco in uh, middle school at Crozier. No, yeah. no, at La Tijera. Uh-huh. And the security guard took my like stash like the first fucking day. What? So <laughs> no, so this was. I don't think so I was yeah, doing it right. I got caught I think up. I'm, too, I'm way too truthful. They snitched on me. No, yeah? so yeah. I think what happened was I kind of was on a roll where like I was making money, and this guy in the class, um, this guy in the class saw that I had a stack of cash. And he told the teacher, like, hey, Steph has a lot of money. So the teacher was like, hey, do you have a lot of money in your backpack? And I was like, yeah. She's like, why? And I'm like, oh, because I sell candies. And, like, I showed her what I was yeah. selling. Like, She's what like, you want? Oh, okay. So they took me to the principal's office. They called my mom. You know, and here comes my mom. <laughs> I'll never forget them telling my mom, like, oh, you know, if you need financial help at home, uh, we can provide you with resources. Uh-huh. And I thought it was the funniest thing because my mom kind of laughed. Like, she smirked. She's like, no, we don't need help. My daughter just likes to sell stuff. And she liked it and she's having fun. So we just let her do it. And they just told my mom, like, yeah, she can't do that because, you know, what if they steal her money or what if they steal her stuff? Like, we can't do anything about it. And it was cool, you know, whatever. I was able to. It's part of the learning process. But I have 50 bucks. The government steals our money. Now, there we go. You know, I was thinking, I'm like, I was was in the third grade. I had to be like. Taxes. I had to be eight or nine. 
So at eight or nine, I was already, I already knew that I can, I had fun making money. And I think I fell into just wanting to work for myself because I worked in a corporate job for a long time, 11 years. So from uh -huh. when I was 16 to 26, no, 26, 27, I pretty much worked a corporate job. I had a 401k. I had a really badass position. I was hiring people. Like, um, I had a lot of friends, like I would hook up people with jobs. I was in a position where I thought I was at the top. And every time I set a goal for myself, I would make it. And, um, I think it took, um, it took my, it took someone to, I had to go through life and really see the deportation system to understand that in a blink of an eye, somebody's life can completely change because of their legal status. And that legal status person in my life taught me that you can't take your life for granted. And I was working too much. So I was so young and I was only 26 and I hadn't really experienced anything. My friends, like the small group of friends that I had, they wouldn't invite me out because they knew I was working. I was a chef. I worked weekends, holidays. Like I was off Monday, Tuesday. I was tired. I didn't want to go out. So I wasn't experiencing life the way I should have at my age. And um, I just kind of, I've always been into art. And I think before I went to culinary school, my dad had to sit with me and he said, you know, I know you want to be a graphic designer, but let's be real. There's so much competition out there. And, you know, your art is your art. I think you're a badass artist, but is that going to make you money? It's like, you're really, you're a really good cook. You've been cooking since you were little and you're already in the industry. Why don't you just stay to that? So then I stick to that and then whoosh, 11 years passed by and I didn't live anything. And then my same, my dad well, sat down with me again 11 years later and, and he said, hey, you know, um, yeah, you're this big badass chef. You have a very good income, but don't be that old lady trying to travel when you're like 60 or 70 because you didn't have time when you were young. So like live your life and stuff So like he that. pretty much, you know, the same man that told me like, hey, do this was telling me like, hey, you're going he a little you, too you, hard. Yeah, you're going like too you fast. work all the time. You don't really, you miss, you're, you're missing out on life. I feel like I started playing around with microblading. I invested, I was into, tat I mean, I'm fully tatted and um, I thought it was cool to do, to microblade eyebrows. Um, and then from there I started doing lashes and I just kind of fell in the industry, but um, I just had to learn really quick. I had to get my license because I had a lot of haters and um, I had to cover my ass in a lot of different ways, which was getting licensed, getting out of my house. Why do you think you have a lot of haters? I don't think I have a lot of haters. I think that just like anybody else, you know, some people with subconsciously don't know that, that they're throwing negative energy towards you. And mm -hmm. I feel like um, it it just became this thing where like, oh, you're not licensed. They will put in a little like, I'm going to get you. Like I'm Now that you like transition into like the beauty industry and stuff like that, and you're working for yourself, do you feel like you have more time now? Absolutely not. No? Because I have to work harder, especially because um, owning your own business, especially, for example, I've been slacking, right? Yeah. This is my theory. It's you have to have your services and you have to have little side incomes, like sell little things. I used to sell jewelry, right? I used to sell my blankets and I have slacked on that so hard that now it's just I'm only I only have an income based off my services. I feel like I'm like what's the word i'm like in between mm -hmm. and lately with my like my business my entrepreneurship mm -hmm. i can literally tell you that i'm just like fuck i think i'm gonna stop taking jobs and i'm just gonna focus on my nine to five so i yeah. could breathe yeah and can you imagine that like someone saying you know what i'm gonna stop doing my entrepreneurship so yeah. i can work 40 hours a week yeah for somebody else and so i could breathe I prefer to work sometimes 40 hours. Entrepreneurship is hard. Yeah, you know? and it's a roller it's, coaster. It's fucking but that, hard. That's something I can tell you. It's like... Like, I'm going to be comfortable and I'm going to just work my fucking man, 40 you have hours no a week. Idea. You have absolutely no idea how many times I want to just go apply at a job. Yeah, but it's because, an addiction though, right? I feel like people like me and you yeah. is just like... Well, you know what, Rick? It's like you, being in a... Like, you, you taught me something. What? Rick's what did taught I... Me what? It. You taught me a lot. You but what, what the, I taught you? I'm going to tell you something that you taught me. I taught you something. Yeah, you taught me. You taught me I something. Can't. You taught me something. I'm very. I you wanted, did. I will never forget something, but you go first. 
So you taught me, you said, oh, yeah, I read this book and you're supposed to have three sources of income. And I was like, God damn, I only have like two. <laughs> I only have two. What sources was I just talking income. about this morning? If you kick, you are who you kick it with. Yeah. I have friends that are like making money. Yeah. I sit down and talk to them and I tell them exactly that. You need to have three sources of income. Yeah. And then they'll turn around and they'll get their asses three sources of income. Yeah. And they got some really good fucking income, but they it sticks to yeah, them. They're like, like three they sources know they of income. They can invest their money yes. from what they're making into something that's going to come up. Again, key word to any entrepreneurs, it's investment. You're going to take an L on some of those investments because you might not make your money back. Going back to something personal, I've never talked about it to anybody besides you guys and like the closest people to me. Uh -huh. But my, my old landlord jacked me for about $2,000, like... It had to be around two thousand dollars, landlords, and, and that's a, a hey. But I took an L with that, you know. And it's just like instead of giving me back my deposit, it's like she jacked me, and here I am, this young entrepreneur, renting her first location, doing everything right, and I took an L. That goes back to like at school when someone was like when they principal when they whatever told your out, father, yeah, like you can. what happens if someone jacks her, and that's crazy because to me I'm like, wait a minute, that's that's part of the experience of hustling and you know? it's part of the experience of being a hustler but there's a lot of people that are not going to experience it because they're being baby their parents are helping them pay for stuff or they're working from home and or they're half-assing their business like oh i'm this big badass business owner but i don't really put in work or i don't really take l's because i'm playing small you yeah, get me yeah. like they're playing very safe where like you Let's just say there's a big, let's just say the hurricane hits, right? And all your stuff gets wet. You're going to have a heart attack, but I'm I sure mean, it's insured. I well, have say, shit happening to me all the time. You know, yeah, the other day you mean, get numb to it too. Like shit happens and you're just like, yeah. fuck, well, it's just like, I'm going to tell you something. You want to know what you taught me? Yeah. It's not what you taught me, but it's like what you said. Okay. It's, it's something that you said and it still sticks to me and it's crazy because oh Nipsey. Oh my God. Yeah. It was during one of my hardest times of my lifetime. Oh. And I was on a job in which, like, you recommend it. You recommended okay. my business. I was on a job. <laughs> and, like, I was just, like, lost with it and whatnot. And I looked down at my phone, and I remember you messaged me, and you're like, hey, Ricks. And it's funny because you call me Ricks, right? Yeah. You're, like, the only person that calls me Ricks. Do I really? Yeah, because yeah, I'm calling hey, you Ricks. Ricardo. I'm no, like, hey, you, Ricks. Ricks. Hey, Ricks. And you're just like, hey, Ricks. And I'm, and I'm like, reading and you're like, you know, I just want to tell you as a friend, like, no matter what happens, you have to run your business. Like, you have to be about your business. You have to keep the money coming in. And it's just like, that hit me hard. That hit me hard because, yes, like, our parents tell us things, you know? Sometimes our partners even tell us things. But it takes, like, a special outsource to tell you something. The it's people from... Look on the outside looking in. Yeah, outside looking in. And yeah. to me, like, even though you're my close friend, like, you're still, like because of how close yes how far we are yeah it's like it meant more. i think my mother and my father when i was or going like, through it they were telling me they were like hey like you, you are keep, like yeah. your money is you yeah you gotta keep take going. care of your money yeah and i no i didn't want to do nothing and like hearing it from you was just like hey yeah. not only was it like hearing it from a female yeah like a female friend but it, it meant just a lot more because it's just like wow and i feel like that's when I knew that, like, no matter what, there was just, like, <laughs> there was an entrepreneur bomb. in you. Yeah. Because you were, like, you, you understood that. And it's crazy because uh, Nipsey's, one of Nipsey's quotes that still goes around today is that, um, you know, you could wake up tomorrow and the person that you love will love somebody else. But a uh. <laughs> $100 bill will still be a $100 bill. <laughs> <laughs> be like, cheers to that. <laughs> cheers I'm to I'm that. I'm going to get so another <laughs> That deserves a shot. <laughs> Cheers to that, Eric. Cheers. Cheers to the audience that. <laughs> Cheers to the audience that's been here with Cheers us to for Rick's hours. First non-interview. <laughs> yeah. I am really proud of you. I am really proud to say I'm your friend. Aww. I am really proud of you as a business owner, and I just feel like you deserve this and so much more. Um, I think it's very important that we um uplift each other with our words and with our actions and i think that you know there's nothing i can tell you that you don't already know about yourself 
But if I have to always reassure you as a friend, I will. Cheers. <laughs> cheers, <to Eric. laughs> cheers. Cheers, Eric. Cheers, guys. Which is, by the way, Steph, I have something for you. For me? What's up yep. with you guys gifting me <laughs> things today? Today we got ourselves a, a Prada beauty bag. I don't know what's <gasps> in it, but Scott Fragrances <laughs> donated this here to the podcast. Eric, Eric what? So you see what I'm saying? Like, it's just spreading good positivity, it's a, it's good vibes. It's mad like, love. You know what? Um, I like genuine stuff. How do you feel, Riggs? Because I think this has happened to me recently. I keep connecting people, Okay. I keep introducing people. I know for some reason I never realized I'm really popular. With the, I'm not an influencer. I'm not this, like, I'm not trying to say, like, oh, I'm this big badass person. No. But I realized that I'm burnt out. A lot of people know me. And I feel like it's off of my conversations or certain people gravitate towards me. So then I end up knowing them, meeting them. And I have a friend. We call him El Licenciado. Mm -hmm. It's on the paisa scene, right? He's, he told me one day, he's like, it's not what you know sometimes. It's who you know. Most definitely. That's how I got promoted recently. Wait, so <laughs> that's my thing. It's like, it's who you know. And I'm like, damn, I know a lot of people. And I'm that type of person. I'm like, oh, you need this. Oh, I got, I know somebody for that. Oh, you need that. I know somebody for that. Let me hook you up with my person. Or if you're just talking to me, I'm one of those people, like, if you really wanted to take advantage of me and, like, get your business going, you would sit with me and be like, yeah, I have this I, idea. I feel like when you go out, you're like, oh, I'm the bridge. What do you mean? Do you ever feel like you that? Like, I'm you the know bridge. what? Maybe I never thought about that, and that makes a lot of sense. Maybe that's what, that was in God's like, I'm plans. I'm the bridge. I could be the bridge. Yes, but, like. Is it a bad thing to be the bridge? It sucks being the bridge, though. I, I used to be the bridge. I, well, I did feel like I'm a bridge. I'm learning how to be the bridge right now because I feel like I've connected a lot of people. And I feel like I've used my connections to help people with their business. And I feel like, you know, I've never even used those people for myself, you yeah. know? So it's just kind of like, you know, if I've never used them, but now I'm helping you use them. And now you're doing all of this. Like, well, that's probably why we get along so much. Is we're probably like selfless, right? Like, yeah, oh, I got all these connections, but you can use them. You can have them. You can have them. Yeah. And I think that, you know, just not to um, defend women, but... I think coming from an independent woman herself, it's like I think a lot of independent women can agree with me and say they we don't want to be independent all the time. We're independent yeah. because we had to be we we had to build ourselves that way, but we don't want to be that way with you. It's like that's where as a man you come in and the masculinity you see me having and caring, you take that away from me yeah. because you're the man. And now you let me be in my feminine and you let me be at peace and you let me not have to worry about everything that a man is supposed to worry about. I don't have to boss up. I don't have to get crazy with somebody. No, absolutely not. But I think that there is that boundary where, you know, I, I was I was raised about I was raised around a lot of men, a lot of good men, a lot of bad men, a lot of shitty men. But somehow they all I watched and I observed and I learned through about. I learned something from all of them and I've learned a lot from you. You know, I'm pretty sure there's people that could say, fuck Ricky, blah, 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 blah. But I mean, you're not going to change the way I see Ricardo because of my experience with Ricardo of my, like, what do you mean? Like you could say whatever you want, but when I sit in a room with Ricardo, I get Ricardo, not the yeah. one you're talking about. I like that. Like you, people change the narrative. Even yeah. with a basic story. You what happened what? this weekend? Oh, shit. By the time it gets to you, that shit's yeah. been diluted. No, and it's like people like to convince other people not to fuck with you. Because yeah, because of their just because experience. They, because of their experience Not even you. just their experience, but they're like their self. Like they have issues with their self-confidence. Yeah. So they hate you for it. I have a question for you. Okay. okay? And I know usually don't ask you a lot of stuff. Where do you see your business going? Like, are you eventually going to leave your bit, like your full time nine to five? Or are you going to keep it around for another while? Well, the plan is to have three sources of income. Yeah. And like I said earlier, that I'm going to continue to invest into my business. And it's going to be it's crazy because that's going to be it's going to be good investments, but it's going to be best for everyone. Mm -hmm. Like I've always like this studio. Yeah anybody could use it i already said anybody's available to use it rent the studio out use yeah. it for your own means we're here um and everybody keeps asking about my next step or where i'm gonna be in five years but let me tell you that 
the things that I plan to do are going to bring joy to everyone that surrounds me. Yeah. That's really going to be like, it's going to be good. And I think Mm -hmm. me and my uh, executive producer are working on something big. Yeah. And I think that everybody around me is going to be able to profit from that. You know what? And I respect you a lot for that because I was paying attention to, um, I've always paid attention to Nipsey's team. Mm -hmm. I think I was raised by Nipsey's team. I think Nipsey helped my parents raise me somehow. I paid attention to their entire movement. And um, something I was paying attention to was they all drive badass bins. Like, they all drive badass cars. You heard that? They all drive badass bins. They all bins. drive really bad Merce- Maybachs. They all she drive said, badass cars. She said N- Nipsey Hussle his and team, his team all drive, all drive badass, badass bins. But here's my theory behind that. Just- because not all of us want that, right? Like, that's not everybody's goal. Okay. But the way I saw it in a business perspective... And this is why you need to pay attention who you're working for and whose team you're in. It's if I'm the leader and I have a team, obviously I don't plan on having a team. I'm a solo girl, but I have a team where like you're my team and we're all coming up together in a way. Right. But for you and your team, it's like I saw that their entire team drives these badass cars. And then I saw other businesses where like. The boss drives his sports car and his employee that puts in the most amount of work drives a little small old Toyota because the boss is taking in so much. He doesn't think like, let me take care of my team. And I think that's so important because it's going back to leadership is like, let me see who your leader is because whoever you're following, I don't want to follow that person if he's not looking out for me and I'm down to follow. But I'm not going to follow the wrong person. So, again, going back to, for me, it's like, I'm in the beauty industry. Ricardo's in the film industry. Our industries don't really coexist in a regular world. But we make money. to Like, we can make money together. Yeah. We make content together. We we literally push each other to limits that connect our businesses. Where if you see me, you see Ricks, and you know who my team is. My next move has to do exactly what you just said. What do you mean? It has to <laughs> do a with big the topic. I had to do with two topics that you just said. It has to do with one, including my team as a leader. Yeah. We're all going to benefit and be joyful from this. Yeah. And two, like, I can't say that because I might give that away. Yeah. But I know I'm heading in the right keep direction. Because people, yeah, I'm not, I'm going to keep it to myself. Yeah. I've been asked this for the Don't last three podcasts. Behind, though. For that <laughs> for the last three <laughs> for the last three, four podcasts, I've been asking what's Rick's next move or where does Rick see himself in five years? And I finally have the an answer for it. And I'm bringing my team along and that's all you guys have for me. That's my team, my friends. And guess what? I'm bringing them along and it's going to bring joy to every single one of them. Let me stop this show real quick. Guys, this episode is sponsored by Stephanie. She sponsored these eyebrows. <laughs> You're hilarious. She sponsored these eyebrows for free just so I could look good for the show. So, guys, please book with Steph, Siete by Siete. She's the fucking <laughs> best do. in Inglewood. <laughs> book, drive those 40 miles, and it's going to be worth it. I promise you. Know you know what? I love servicing men because I never started my business with the intention to be a female-only business. If her brand were to have a theme song, what would it be and why? If my brand was to have a theme song, man, I don't think it's, I think it's super obvious it would be a Nipsey Hustle song. Which one? Hustle and Motivate. That's me. And I think when people hear that song, they think of me because when we did a video with it, but I literally put in work to motivate others because I was educated and I was I started my business from this person that motivated me to keep motivating others. And I think it took it more serious when he passed away. And their entire team still motivates me right now. Rest in peace, this we have some. That's why they follow me, huh? They think I know the way. Start to control the things. Ball in the solo way. And if you pattern my trend, I make you my protege. Cross in that soldier race. Niggas don't know them days Take you in back of the buildings Make you expose your rage Take you across the tracks Make you explode the face Now you official now But you got a soul to save I just been cooking that note I'm about to drop in the fuel Think if I call it the great 
The people gon' call it the truth I ain't really trip on the credit 